So recently I read a book called Dopamine Nation by Dr. Anna Lemke. And I thought, I wonder what a book on addiction would have to teach us about embodiment. There's no specific embodiment activities in the book, but it definitely leads to the more time that we are in the moment, the more time that we're able to tolerate pain, when things come up, the less likely we are to be addicted. So having a practice of embodiment on a regular basis can, can be protective of us from falling into addiction, which if you read her book, it's quite common that um, our world is just loaded with high dopamine activities or chemicals, substances, and so forth. So being aware of that, being aware of the pleasure, pain part of the brain is all very helpful. And then with that information, choosing to do embodiment practices. There's this delicate balance in the brain that originally actually helped us as humans to move forward, to seek reward, like the reward of food or sex or whatever our reward that we needed to happen. And nowadays, we're, we live in this world filled with activities and chemicals that can sti stimulate the dopamine system. And so that leads us toward more and more pleasure, but the more and more pleasure that we seek because of that delicate balance in the brain, we actually end up having pain. So the patients that come to her are when patients have overloaded so much on the pleasure side that all they feel now, even when they're still using that same behavior or that same substance that originally created pleasure, all they feel is pain. The heart of her teaching includes a process for helping clients analyze addiction. The word dopamine itself, she's turned into an acronym. Data is the D, objective. So what's your objective? What problems are you trying to solve? Abstinence, knowing that four weeks is what you need to abstain from a high activity that you may be addicted to in order to change the brain chemicals, mindfulness, insight, next steps, and experiment. So mindfulness is really what I wanted to talk about today. If you look up what is mindfulness and what promotes mindfulness, it's being in the present moment and being able to uh, see the body both as how you're experiencing it, but then be objective and being able to look at the body as if you're looking at the stars or something, being an observer and an experiencer. What she's saying is that we need to be able to be in the present moment, to be mindful. So today I invite us to take a simple walk in nature, make it slow, and this is just a practice for being mindful and the more times in the day that we can practice like oh I'm paying attention to what I'm doing now the more we're able to tolerate pain when it arises and it's something that most of us have access to even if it's you know in a city park or even in our yard so just go out in nature and what do you see what do you hear what do you smell what does your body feel like? And this book actually taught us why we don't spend as much time in our body. It's because we may be trying to fix some kind of pain that we're having and so we seek out activities like eating or drinking or 
taking substances to cover up the fact that we feel bad, feel pain. And so we do feel pleasure when we do those activities. But she explains how the design of the brain is a delicate balance between pleasure and pain. And so what we once felt as pleasure only leads to more pain. The reality is we just need to be with ourselves. And so for all of us, no matter where we are in terms of addiction, uh, being with ourselves is, is really important.